3D Design for 3D Printing, tutorial number six. In this one, we learn how to modify imported meshes like STLs to make changes without having to model from scratch. This video is part of a series on learning 3D design to create custom 3D printed parts using a free Onshape account. I'll link the playlist below so you can see the previous episodes, including how to make an account and set up your units. Today is all about when the source CAD for a file you wanna modify is not available. And that means working with STLs to make changes in an efficient way. For most of us, when we 3D print, we use an STL file. These are not solid models, but rather meshes, with every surface divided into triangles. And if we look inside an STL file, we can see exactly this data. We have instructions for which way the triangle faces, and then the coordinates of the three corners that form the triangle. Now Onshape is designed as a solid modeler and not really intended for STLs, but there's still enough functionality there to modify them to meet your needs. In this tutorial, we'll look at two files, a handle that we designed in the last part, and then how to modify something more practical, an electronics case for an Ender 3, where we'll look at the hypothetical situation that the mounting pattern we need for the main board is different to that which is provided. Just to be clear, if the author of the files has provided a step file, import that and you'll have a much easier time. But in our case, let's pretend that wasn't provided and we only have an STL mesh to work with. If you need to take measurements for your project but don't have digital calipers, I've linked a set of inexpensive calipers in the description below. As always, I'd recommend being thorough and writing down all of your dimensions on a piece of paper before starting CAD. Time to import an STL into Onshape, and for our first example, we'll start with this simple handle that we modeled and then 3D printed as part of the last tutorial. It's ideal for this demonstration because it's not too simple or too complicated. In Onshape, if you'd like to create a new document, come up to Create and then click Document. However, I'll be adding to the TT Tutorials document, which is linked in the description below. I'm then going to come down to the plus and click on Create Part Studio, and I'll right click and rename this tab. To import our STL, we'll once again come down to the plus, and this time go to the bottom option, which is Import. You'll see this box after selecting the file from your hard drive. And then the majority of the time, apart from checking the units, the default options will be just fine. So we click OK. We'll have a box pop up telling us our progress, which not long after will tell us that the file has been imported successfully. And if we come down to the bottom, we'll see that there's a new tab with our STL imported with all its triangular glory. If we want, we can work directly in this document, but I'm actually going to switch back to the original one and insert the STL by coming up to the top and clicking on Derived. I can then click on my imported STL, click on part one, and then click the tick to bring it into this part studio. Now in the past, importing an STL in Onshape was almost a waste of time because you could use it for reference only. That's the equivalent of what we did earlier in the series where we imported a photo into a sketch to use as a tracing reference. But now things have been improved, and although we can't interact with the flat faces, we can in fact interact with any of the vertices that make up the STL. The first thing we'll do is learn how to take basic measurements. And we can click on two points and then look down to the lower right hand side to find out the distance between them, which here we see is 20. However, if we click the tape measure to open up, we can get a lot more detail. For instance, if we were to select points that don't line up on the arc, we can ignore the basic diagonal measurement that Onshape is giving us and instead work out the thickness of the part by looking at the Z distance of 4.6 millimeters. Very handy for measuring your item when the two points you're clicking don't quite line up. Let's say for this part that we wanna shorten it overall and add a separate mounting boss out to the side. To do either of those, we'll need to place a sketch and the best place for that sketch would be on the left hand lower surface. However, when I look from the side, I can actually see that this surface is a little bit below the origin and I'll expand and see that that is 0.4 millimeters. So I'm gonna come up, create a plane, click on the top as a reference and then offset that 0.4. I'll check the direction and reverse it and now our new plane should be perfectly on top of the STL surface. I'll now start a sketch 
click on our new plane, and now I know I'll be drawing right where I want on the model. At this point, it's probably useful to come up to the Use tool, which is the keyboard shortcut U, and click on any vertices that you know you're going to use. So I'll click on the end of the arc, the other end of this arc, as well as some vertices that make up the other end of this flat section. With this framework, I can then use the regular sketch tool, such as the line tool, to join these edges, and then the arc tool to replicate the arc on the end. And we can see on shape is trying to make it a tangent by default, which means it's going to match the existing shape nicely. For this arc, however, that's not going to be possible. So let's look at another trick. I'll draw it off to the side, and then I'll come up to my constraints and pick coincident. And then if I zoom in, I can click on any of these vertices and then click on my arc and it will snap the two together, meaning that my new arc matches the old geometry perfectly. Now that we've placed this arc, we can see that its center point most likely looks like the center point for this hole. So I'll draw a new circle for where I want my new hole directly to the left of that using the automatic horizontal constraint. And from there, I'll draw an arc and make it concentric so it shares the same center point. Previously, these two holes were 60 apart, but let's say I want a smaller gear, so I'll dimension the gap to 40 millimeters instead. I now have what I need to modify this end of the STL. So I'm gonna close the sketch and then come up to my extrude tools. And this is where Onshape has improved out of sight. I can select this end of the sketch, come to remove, set it to through all. The one part is selected as my merge scope, and when I hit the tick, you can see that Onshape will interact with and cut through the STL, giving it a new external surface, and previously this just wasn't possible. Let's edit that extrude and also select my hole. We'll click the tick to update, and you can see that my geometry has been updated with a hybrid of new Onshape features and the old STL. It is more sluggish when you're editing an STL, but it's still a massive improvement on what existed before. Let's now try adding on rather than cutting away. Again, I'm gonna create a new plane. I'll offset it from the top plane, except this time I'll change it to plane point and I'll click on this corner up here so the plane sits perfectly flat on top. I can now start a sketch on top of this new plane and I have confidence that I'll be drawing in line with this top surface. Once again, I'm gonna press U for use and I'm gonna click and trace this corner as well as a point from the opposite corner. I can now use the line tool and draw a straight line snapping to these two points. From here, it's a sketch like any other. It doesn't matter that we're adding onto an STL. We can use the sketch tools and then dimensions and constraints to draw what we need. With this complete, I can now close the sketch, come up to extrude and select my profile. And I'm gonna tell it to come up to a vertex and for that vertex, I'm going to click one on the bottom of the model. We can now see our extrude will come up and stop perfectly in line with that. So I'll click the tick and I've added on a section to my STL. Once again, Onshape has blended the mesh with our new geometry, but it is time to talk about limitations. Let's say we wanted to add a fillet to this corner. It's not going to work because this half is a mesh and this half is a solid body. So when we click on here, even with a small radius, we get an error. Also, some feature scripts, such as Thread Creator, which we installed in the last video, just won't work with a model that partially contains a mesh. If I try and add a thread, after I hit the tick, it'll be red for an error, and when I hover over, it says this feature does not support meshes. So let's delete that feature and then look at a workaround. What I will do is to edit my extrude and change it from add to new. Temporarily, we've made it a separate part, so I should now be able to come to third creator and since the part we're applying it to doesn't have any meshes as part of it, the feature will be added without any errors. We can now join the two parts back together by coming up and clicking Boolean. We click on the two parts, hit the tick and they will be joined back into one. Slightly inconvenient, but a workaround that should see you through. To create a thread here, we're gonna need a bit of lateral thinking. So I'll come inside my sketch I'll draw a second circle much bigger than the first and I'll update the extrude to cut out this large circle. Using the same circle from the sketch, I can then do a new extrude, once again setting it to a new temporary part, add the thread to the inside and once again use boolean join to add the new and old parts together. Although it looks a bit strange here, this hybrid part can be exported as an STL ready for printing just like any other file. 
and when we import it into our slicer, we can see that there's no errors or warnings. Despite the way this file was created, it's completely manifold and 3D printable. So let's confirm that 100% by test printing the modified part. And here we can see the original STL, as well as the one that we modified in Onshape side by side. There's not much to say here, except that all of the features are fully working. This includes the screw threads that we didn't modify, as well as the screw thread we recreated in the shorter custom section. With Onshape, we've managed to edit an STL and achieve our goal. That's the basic workflow. So let's look at two more real world examples that are more complicated. So how about a second example where we want to take this electronics case, delete the existing mounting holes and then input our own. The first thing we do is to select three points on the surface we want to draw and use those to create a plane. I then drew a sketch snapping to the corners of the geometry with the idea that I would extrude down to fill in this void and extrude up with a cut to cut up the top of these mounting bosses. However, every time I tried to extrude up to make the cut, Onshape would give me an error complaining about the Boolean operation. So at this point, I installed a feature script called Boolean Plus. You'll find the URL in the description and all you need to do is click on add custom features, paste the URL in and keep clicking through until you see the tool. If you're looking to learn more about what feature script add-ons are, that was covered in detail in the last video. Where I wanted to cut, I extruded upwards as a new and separate body. And now I can use the Boolean plus feature script, set it to subtract. The tool is my temporary cutting shape. The target is my geometry I want to keep. And as we can see, we get a good result without any errors. We can now do a second extrude using our same sketch, adding to the existing geometry and telling it to end on a vertex and picking any of the ones on the underside of the case. Hit the tick. And as you can see, we've now completely blanked off this STL, ready to add our own custom mounting solution. We would then have a nice flat surface to draw a sketch on with our new mounting pattern. This one here is just fictitious. For the inner circle, we could cut through the floor of the case like before, and for the outer circle, extrude upwards to create mounting bosses, just like the original design. And then add chamfers on the top of our bosses to help clear the underside of the PCB. And in a few simple steps, we've taken a complicated geometry STL and remodeled only the bits we needed to to meet our intended solution. Another example, a 3D scan shared with me from my patron Andy. If we click on one of the cameras, we can see that it's been imported at a strange angle. But Andy made a great start by setting up a plane, matching the base surface as close as possible by clicking on three points as the basis of that plane. A sketch could then be created with a 10 sided polygon, sized and positioned to match the scan. And after some extrudes, drafts and fillets, we end up with a part that's matched nicely to a 3D scan and should allow the real life glass to sit inside the 3D printed holder. I did have a few requests for this one, so hopefully it hits the mark. If you'd like to request something I haven't covered in this series yet, get it down below in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, Happy designing custom 3D parts for 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.